So today we're taking a look at Apple's new 13-inch MacBook Pro with the touch bar as well as the 15-inch MacBook Pro with a touch bar. Every time Apple releases a new laptop, two things happen. There's a group of people that get really excited about a sleek new laptop getting released, and then there are people that are disappointed with Apple's latest offering because it doesn't feature every single thing that they want. With the release of Apple's new MacBook Pro, both things have happened once again. So let's get the positive things out of the way first. The new MacBook Pro's display is vibrant, bright, and impressive. Its second generation butterfly keyboard is my favorite keyboard that I've ever used, and the laptop is also very light, measuring in at 1.37 kilograms for the 13 inch and 1.83 in the 15 inch. Its touchpad is also massive and extremely responsive, and the force touch mechanism that mimics a tactile click is a significant step above the touchpad featured in the 12 inch MacBook. So one of my favorite things about the laptop is the form factor. You can really see Apple's industrial design. It's an incredibly sleek device despite the issues that some people have with it. And honestly, it's probably one of my favorite looking laptops that I've ever used. Where Apple's new line of pros falters, however, is when it comes to the touch bar, as well as lack of standard USB-A ports. So let's take a look at the touch bar first. I like the idea of a secondary touch display that changes depending on the context of the app open. The issue right now though, is that very few apps support the touch bar. And of those that do, the use case always doesn't make sense. Apps like Photos and QuickTime are great for scrubbing video with the touch bar, but finishing phrases with predictive text and emojis in mail feels forced and disconnected. Where the touch bar experience totally falls apart for me is the fact that it collapses to its quick access three bar menu even when using an app that doesn't support the secondary screen. This means that if I'm listening to music on Spotify and want to skip a track, I need to click the arrow button on the touch bar first before being able to access these controls. This seems like a misstep on Apple's part and a feature that definitely needs to change in the future. Developer support for the touch bar is growing, and if any company can make the concept of a contextual secondary laptop touchscreen a viable platform, Razer really wasn't able to do it, it's totally Apple. Next, we have probably the biggest controversy surrounding the new MacBook Pros beyond the line's expensive price tag, Apple's decision to go strictly with four micro USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports. I think this is the right move, but before you show up at Mobile Syrup's office with pitchforks, hear me out. USB-C is the future of connectivity and the dream of having one single port that can power a device, connect a display, and work with a variety of other accessories is an incredible proposition. Apple has a history of killing aging technology and pushing the industry forward. In this case, however, the company is a few years too early and needed to include a USB-A dongle in with every single one of its new pros. Unfortunately, that's just not what Apple did, and this is forcing pretty much every single person that buys this new laptop to go out and purchase an adapter of some sort. Also, the removal of an SD card slot is a significant issue for many users and doesn't fit into Apple's argument that removing USB-A allowed the company to make the Pro thinner. So yes, USB-C was the right choice by Apple, but dropping the SD card is a huge misstep. If you want the best computer you can get in terms of performance for your dollar, the MacBook has never been the option for you, and Apple's new Pro line totally exemplifies this fact, especially since its RAM option caps out at 16 gigs, and since both the 13-inch and 15-inch Mac are using last year's Skylake processors and not Intel's more powerful Cabby Lake architecture. But if you want a moderately powerful powerful laptop that's absolutely beautiful looking and buy into Apple's concept of the future of the touch bar, then the new MacBook Pro is an impressive but still very pricey laptop. So that's a review of Apple's new MacBook Pros. Make sure to like this video, smash that subscribe button, and more importantly, check out our more in-depth review on mobilesyrup.com and follow me on Twitter at Patrick underscore O'Rourke.